Hello friends, my name is Yarrash Bahag. I hope so you're doing super duper great. By the way, what? After this very very long time, this finally a video. The video is on PM2. Now if you're thinking, what the hell is this PM2? PM2 is actually a process manager for Node.js application. What is a process manager? So process manager, it, it's written over here, you know, you just read these two lines. It's written PM2 is a daemon process. I don't know, like, is that pronounced daemon? D-A-E-M-O-N, daemon? I don't know. You can like, tell me if my pronunciation is correct, wrong, right, whatever it is. So, uh, yeah, so, and to manage your Node.js application, by the way, that word daemon means background, any process which runs in background is called a daemon process and you can manage it using this pm2 right so i hope so this will be a helpful this is not a tutorial we'll be learning together of course i know most of the things but few custom properties monitoring we'll be also learning about pm2 plus so it's going to be a lot of fun so to use pm2 we need a node.js application right so let's create a node.js application first a simple node.js application which would be like nice and beautiful first thing we'll be doing is going to direct stop creating a application my node app very unique and beautiful name first thing we'll be doing is initializing a project as as because you're watching a tutorial on uh, i mean on on node on pm2 i assume you already know the basics of node so i'll just uh, be making this application pretty quick right so, okay, this is something else, don't save, okay, don't save, get lost. Oh, uh, we have to do, I don't know. Okay, it is open over here, wrong window. Okay, so the first thing we'll be doing is, uh, we'll be creating a, a f let's create a folder, right? Let's create a folder for SRC where all our source code will be living and let's create a server.js file, right? You can you can create index.js file that's up to you uh next thing what we'll be doing is we'll be installing node so i'll say yarn add ex sorry express not node we'll be installing express so that we can create a very basic node application let's uh express is equal to require express i i really think uh, like if you if you if you feel like what am i doing here you just you just watch some of my other tutorials which explains node express all these things okay so let's write our app is equal to express right the next thing what we do what we need is uh, let's write a normal get call at home and uh, this will have a request and a response right and what we can do is response.send it's working right uh, so and now let's start our server. So let's say app dot listen on port. Which port should we listen on? Which port? Let's listen on port uh, uh, eighty eighty, right? And once it started listening, I mean once it is successful uh, in after creating the server, we'll, what we'll say is server started successfully, right? Server, oh, come on! Server started started successfully. Right, so we have a small Node.js application. We want to scale it. We want to have load balances, all kind of like like fun stuff we want to, we want in this application. First of all, let's run this application so that we know at least it's working, right? So yarn, what? Yarn. Okay, we need a script over here. Let's 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 give a script, man. Um, so script start. A star script, a star script, and what this will do is it will go and say node src slash server .js. I think that's the name, right? So now if we say yarn uh, start, that that should basically start our server. So our server has started. Now if I just uh, go and uh, which, uh, go to this and go to port eighty eighty, right? You can see it's working. So our server has started. Basically, now we will use this pm two. So if I could like go a little this side, you can you can read this command first. So you have to install it in your uh, system. By the way, I'll, I'll be helping you on Docker. So if you are running in Docker, this little bit different thing, but ultimately you have to install this, right? So just copy this command from here. And I have already installed this thing. So it will, in my case, I do not need to. I mean, it will say it's already installed, but in your case, you need to, you do need to install PM2. 
most probably in my case it was like a pseudo was required to do this but in your case it might not be a, a, like necessary okay so once you create your application once you have pm2 installed how how would you run your application on pm2 right there are few basic commands for pm2 so it's all pm2 ls right so this is like a permission denied so i have to actually use sudo pm2 ls right so uh, let me give my password to this okay uh, you can see currently there is no application running on my machine so it's all empty right so let's say if, you, if i want to start my current app right how will i do that i just have to say pm2 start and then uh, the name of the file right so i have to say src slash server.js that's the file i want to start okay permission denied again i have to use sudo sudo super user yes right so you can see this this is the prompt which you will be getting server and it's online that means pm2 has successfully started this process if you if you by mistake lose this for some reason uh, what you can do is you can just say pm2 uh, again sudo pm2 uh, ls which will list down the server it says errored because it is having some error right so what to do uh let's let's write let's see what what is the error and why the error happened a uh, few things i think port selection happens uh, okay okay what could be the error the error i'll tell you the error why it actually gave error because we had already started the server over here and like on the same port if you want to start another server that's not possible so what we have to do is we'll we'll run it again okay uh so you can see it's online it's running it's successful we were able to successfully start our server right so if i now run this ls command you will see that it's online right so now if i just go on my local host it's running in the background ma'am it's running in the background so if i just go to port 8080 you can see it's running in the background pretty successfully now the question arises okay that's fine that's till here everything is okay now how could i track my application how could i actually know the statistics how much ram is it consuming how much memory is it consuming and the most important thought how to make our node js application multi core right so how to run it like as you know a um, node js by default is a single threaded language so let's let's make it multi core right so how can you do that so uh, there are several ways to do this okay first of all let's start let's stop our server so how we do that is basically So if I list down this, every server has some name. You can see my has server name. That's the name of the file which we are running. You can just name it anything, right? So what we'll do is we'll just uh, we'll just stop it. How can, how to stop it? So we'll say sudo pm2 uh, stop server. That will basically stop our server there and there. It, now the server is not living. You want proof? See, it's not working, right? Now the server is not living. What we'll do is to uh, run it on all available port on your computer. What you have to do is there's slash i. There's a annotation, so we have to say sudo uh, pm2 start server dot oh, sorry uh, src slash server dot js, and uh, you have to pass up there's something like slash i. Right? If you pass max, this will start at like whatever maximum port which you have. Like let's say if your computer has eight. Eight cores. In my case, it is. So it will start at eight. It if it is four, that max. And if you want to provide like some specific number of cores, you can give like three, four, five. And you please do not exceed the amount of cores which you have in your computer because that will eventually lead to like uh, that will not run. Now you can see that this has started on all all the ports basically all the uh, like this this started on all eight cores of my machine. right so now it is much more fast now the question arises how to actually uh, like uh, how to get the statistics right so how to get that beautiful dashboard which you saw on the thumbnail right how to get that so that's that's a feature of pm2 plus by the way this is not a free feature so uh, this is not a free feature just to let you know right so um this is not a free feature and you there's some pricing but it's okay you can just check the pricing in the pm2 plus so it's called pm2 plus by the way pm2 plus right uh, you can see pm2 plus over documentation over here you can see go to pricing 
you can see all the things so in the free open source version these things are available right zero zero downtime reloads terminal based monitoring and all those all those things but you get kind of a lot of features in the bed one so it's up to you whatever you prefer okay so let's let's now go ahead and talk about a little bit more so you can delete an app something like this so delete command is there stop command is there reload command is there which would help you to reload your application right so that this this list is like self-explanatory the commands are making sense right so till now he till here we know this then we have pm2 logs so the logs is okay okay so logs is something like this i'll just show you okay so if i write pm again sudo pm2 logs this will give me all the logs of all these like server zero is generating these logs and similar in a, in a similar fashion all other processes what logs they are generating you can see like these are the logs generated by and you are seeing like this server started multiple times the reason is because uh, like it is running on multiple cores right next thing what we what we want is we want to monitor like let's say if you want terminal based monitoring the command is you can see it's called a pm2 monit again i have to do it using sudo command so pm2 uh, monit right and just hit enter you can see there's one process currently running which is server if i just go you can see heap size is 9.94 mb right and sorry uh yeah and heap uses is 85 percent right and you can see like everything regarding this right so that's how you do it so you can even see server logs right so if i just go to this thing again this might generate a log i'm not sure okay this doesn't generate a log but this this works basically you can generate a log and you can see it in real time over here this is terminal based right i just press Control c to just exit that that's how it works uh, but it is not compulsory that you have like a terminal based there's something called pm2 plus right so you can write sudo pm2 plus which might tell you to log in now this okay uh type the name of the bucket you want to connect to i want to connect to server invalid choice okay pm2 uh plan bucket name pm2 okay let's 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 copy this and paste this. this is the name of the bucket we want to connect to right right so it's using a public key and there you go let's register using our gmail id right we have our gmail id registered uh, actually my account is not created using this so i just let me switch switch this just give me a second right so that's a different account just give me a second okay uh, Yeah, this this is how the dashboard looks you can see this is how the dashboard looks so this one is ours this is this is for another server right so this one is ours this is how it looks so you can probably see like this you can see detailed real time uh, memory bandwidth everything like the usage thing so if you click on any one of these you can actually see the real time usage in the graph itself so that's pretty much amazing right so you can see multiple logs you can even see real time logs as because like this is real time so our computer our application is not generating any logs in real time so that's why it's not visible over there but you can definitely do that so by the way uh, i have done this before that's why i didn't like ask me to log in but if you do it for, for the first time you may get a login thing you can just sign up using your gmail account and that would probably work if it doesn't work comment down below i'll definitely i would love to help you out uh let's go ahead this is the pm2 this is the Plus, I mean, this is the pet version. You don't get this request in the free version. Uh, then you have the ecosystem file. We'll not be going deep into the ecosystem file, but uh, that's fine. This simply defines that, let's say you you want to like, what should be the development environment and everything. If you want to be very specific with that, you can define an ecosystem file and run it directly. So that's what it is. 
uh, this is like the watch command so let's say if you are in development mode and you want uh, you want your application to be started again you want uh, you, you want your application to be started automatically at, as soon as it detects any change just like node mon you can directly do it using pm2 so that works Yeah, you can define a name. That's pretty much it. Uh, so that's that's the those were the core features of PM2, right? Uh, so you learned about you can see the cluster mode, right? So I'll just show you. So you just have to pass slash i, which I just told you slash i, and dash i and then max for the maximum core, or you can define the core. You can see even in, if you have like a file, you can define it. I mean these these, okay. These are the shutdown commands, so you can do that. All, all those things are there, right? Then you have like custom, uh, custom, what to say, custom logs, right? So how to generate that, right? PM2 on a static server, we don't care about that, right? So let's let's see how, how can we generate plus custom, mm, custom data monitoring, right? So I'll just give you a brief on how you can do that, right? But I will not do it right now. The reason is we we don't have the certain data. We don't have a real time data, but I'll just give you an idea. Uh, if you want a full tutorial on this, I would love to create a tutorial. So you can just, you can just let me know in the description, in the comment down below, right? So just do that. Uh, what, what is, what else is there? Application dashboard, we have already seen that. Notification. Uh, it's okay. You can see this, this is the library. So PM2 slash IO is there, right? What you can do is you can notify of an error if it is there, something like this. So if if you, if you any crash is detected, if you if you want to lock that out, that stuff out, you can do this, something like this. So yeah, that's pretty much it, I think. I hope so you learned about PM2. PM2 is an amazing production process manager. So if you, if you're launching it, okay. One important thing I missed, how to use this in Docker. So for Docker, there is something else, right? So you, if you, if you in Docker, if you run up your program in the background, background, your Docker will be terminating and you'll like, you'll not have anything. So what, just a little, there's a little difference. Instead of using PM2, right? Uh, in Docker, what would you do is you would, you would use PM2 process, right? So just I'll show you how does, does that work. I'll just stop the PM2 process, right? Sudo uh, PM2 stop server, right? Right. Let's say I want to start the same thing, the server thing, uh, but but I want to start it using in the Docker file. How will you do that? So you say pm2 uh, process, right? Uh, again, sudo is very much required, right? So, so pm2 process, a uh, similar thing, server, something like uh, src slash server.js, right? Slash i, slash i is just like how many cores you want to start on. So uh, you will say maximum, right? And then are we leaving something? No, we we are not. It's not PM two process. I I I missed. I missed the name. It's something else. Let's 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 just search PM two Docker right. There's like Docker integration, yeah. So it's it's called PM two what what PM two runtime. Oh, I missed it. It's not PM two process. It's PM two runtime. Sorry guys. It's PM two runtime. So that's what you have to place in your. You can see server started successfully. So this will not terminate your application. This will keep it on running as is as it is right right, and uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I hope so you like this tutorial and if you have any doubt or if you have any suggestion you can definitely give it in the description. Thank you, have a great day. Bye bye. Happy New Year. Whatever. Bye. Bye.